Well, good morning, ladies and gents. Welcome to Monday morning. It's now the 8th of August, and we're set, by the looks of it, to go into another heat wave. So I'm just having a, a quick look around. I want to go have a look at that field down there. So, yeah, we've not had any more rain. I think I said the other day we had about 13 mil in the last uh, two, three weeks. It's not a huge deal. I'm going to stop now. Can you hear that? I can't hear any traffic. That's because I know the main road over that way, well, one of the main roads that way, has got flaming roadworks on it. Just where I turn off. <laughs> no idea what they're doing. But there's absolute chaos. I had a little bit of a cheeky plan. Um, there's good weather coming. I thought, you know what, maybe I have to get a couple more bales. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to check this out. But as much as it's grown, and it's grown four or five inches, um, there's not going to be enough on this to be worth mowing. And yes, I have still got muck in this field. To be fair, that's the biggest piece I've found so far. But most of it's right down in bottom. Which, if I set the mower high enough, it'd be fine. Um, I have taken second cuts off this field before, and it's been really nice. It's really nice leafy stuff. Um, but there's just not going to be enough here to make it worthwhile. Oh, the young swallow's getting ready to learn how to fry. Yeah, there's been a little job I've been trying to do for couple of weeks now, which is putting some longer tines on this. I'm finding these, these tines are push out, quite short compared to, well, that, when you get them stuck into a big bale. These big ones go all, pretty much all the way through, whereas the short ones end up being kind of halfway. Because I've only got two in these bigger bales. To be fair, it's not too bad in the forefoots, but when you get bigger, there's obviously more weight in them. And it gets harder to hold onto them. So, um, I've ordered these. Well, contract lad down the road, got them in. Um, but the first ones he got, they're actually a, a slightly bigger thread on them, so they don't go through the bushings. Um, there's about two mil difference between fitting and not fitting, so... Be a simple job of using the uh, correct tools and just undo them. All right, job done. So you can see we've just got that little bit extra stick in the bale, which would be nicer. Um, I think I said before I did cock up when I built this thing. I should have actually had these. The, the mounting plates, the face plates, at like a, a 45 degree angle. Unfortunately, I didn't realise with the Sanderson that uh, she hasn't really got a good crowd back on it. So that headstock didn't quite go far enough back compared to like, the 698. Um, so when you've got bales on, you've kind of, that's probably your maximum angle for horizontal at the floor. So. Yeah, wish I'd uh, box them out a bit, but such is life, it works. Right, it's a bit of a turn up for the books now. Um, just had a phone call from a mate who's got the straw field. Worked out this morning. And he says, I can take some. So I've had a word with this state and, um, well, the bailers them. <laughs> so I'm just uh, greasing through everything at the moment. Just checking it over. Uh, we said we'd take about 100 bales. I might just make 50 for myself, just to try and flog them. Um, just have a look at my twines. Pretty much finished. The twine balls exactly the same, which is nice to know. I mean, my bales are coming out square. Just throwing a couple of extras in that we've had left over for a while, just in case. But they should do about 500 bales, I think, between two of them. So... Uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad, really. One problem I do have is one of the grease points on my nutter. It's actually for the 
shaft that's down there has broken off. I'll just try working on it, but I can't get thread. Well, get it to thread, so I'll have to take that apart. I've got five minutes and retap it. So the thread goes in. Um, but yeah, I just greased everything up. What I shall do is, yeah, whilst I remember, I need to have a look at that anyway. 650. Hang on. It's the only way to see. Five, six. 656 bales. Right, I need to make a note of that. Because that's the last, the last field that we bailed. I need to know how many bales we came off it. Right, well, I've got time. I might as well show you this as well. Um, there's a bit of a difference in baling hay and straw. Uh, hay is quite a, a dense material. Come back out. Um, hay is quite a dense material. It doesn't have a lot of spring in it compared to straw. Whereas straws, if you look at the whole, uh, look at the straw itself, um, it's quite hollow. So there's a lot of air in it, which means it needs to be really packed tight. Otherwise, it tries and springs back open again. So when you cut a string on a straw bale, it's uh, pretty much explodes. Now usually what we've got in here, down here we've got some hay dogs which are these things here. Now these, when the plunger comes forward, pushes a flap over the top of those, they can go down and then the flap won't go back into the chamber. Also the same with these cheese grates here, they'll just hold it back as well as giving it a bit of tension. But with straw, what you have is what they call wedges. Now this is a wedge here, and that's a wedge there. Usually in hay, I leave these flush, so there's no pressure on these at all. But in the hay, I've got them wound right in. So just a little handle here to, to wind in and out, and they can move. But I put them all the way in. That basically gives more resistance for the bale coming through the chamber, which means you can then pack it tighter and get a better bale. Well, in the straw anyway. There is, I've had an argument with people before, there is no need to have those hay dogs in, in the chamber when you're baling hay. If there is, there's something wrong. And I must admit, I've done that before when I first started going. And uh, yeah, it, as my mate says, you can end up putting too much pressure into the bale compared to what the plunger's supposed to put in. So, right, that'll do, I'm off for my lunch. Right, we're heading down to the field. John Deere on back. Big field of straw. And uh, yeah, we'll get down here in the entrance. But uh, it's a bit weird, because this feels like really wrong, because I'm <laughs> I don't usually drive down here. You know when you're a kid and you can like duck it into neighbours' gardens, which is obviously very naughty. <laughs> but it's that kind of feeling that I'm not supposed to be in here, but I am actually allowed to be in here. I'm talking to the farmer. It's one of them weird things. I think the farmer's actually over there in that field, but I don't know. I want to try and get some footage if I can. Well, that was good timing. Just set off again. Just had a quick word with him. He's, uh, he's saying that he's. Right, let me get this right. His bushel weight is good. He said the corn, this, yeah, the grain itself is pretty good. Um, he's a bit down on yield. I think he said it was about two and a half ton he was getting, rather than three on the wheat. And Bali said he did quite well, but. He was just explaining to me the differences of the fill, the grain fills. He was saying that uh, luckily for his wheat, he'd, uh, sorry, his barley, that the hot weather came at the right time and it had a water at the right time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of making this bit up as I go along because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm more grass than based for everything I've ever done, be it, uh, be it sports fields or making a. So uh, this bit's all a bit different for me, but we're learning.
Right, so that's 100 and I think it was about 111. The little bale's done. Uh, didn't bother with sledge because I put that away on the big Arctic trailer. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to then try and take it off. So uh, boss has just run off with 698 with the Fleming trailer up back. And he's got a little, he's got a dwarf load up back of it. <laughs> a little load up back of it. Um, but yeah, that should do us now. So yeah, New Orleans did fine. Bailey did fine. And good little bales. And solid enough. So uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be enough for winter. Farmer has said he's got a round boat west of this anyway. Um, but he has said if we need some more, we can go and gather some up from his, uh, his shed. So that was good. But yeah, I think that was the first time ever I managed to put this baler on. Pretty much set it where I wanted it to be. <laughs> it just went off. Basically the same as hay, but with those wedges in. And I did turn up the pressure a little bit just to really get them crammed in. So they're a good, nice little 20 kilo bale. Much bigger than that and rather well, ready for us anyway, so. And uh, the last is going to be thrown around. I'm guessing she won't want them too heavy anyway. So she hates little bales. Just like some because they're easy. Right, I've got to take Baylor away.